Why does the Democratic Party appear to tremble at the mention of RFK Jr.? That's the question we're here to explore today. RFK Jr., or Robert Francis Kennedy Jr., if you prefer, is a figure of considerable intrigue in the American political landscape. He's the embodiment of the quintessential Democratic candidate, at least on paper. Born into the Kennedy dynasty, he carries a legacy that echoes through the corridors of Democratic power. His family is akin to Democratic royalty, its name synonymous with the party's principles and aspirations. His father, Robert F. Kennedy, and his uncle, John F. Kennedy, both left incredible marks on American history. RFK Jr.'s credentials extend far beyond his lineage, though. He's an accomplished lawyer and an environmental activist, demonstrating a commitment to social justice and sustainability that aligns perfectly with the Democratic ethos. His East Coast elite status, bolstered by degrees from Harvard and the University of Virginia, further cements his position in the upper echelons of the party. But it's not just his brain that's impressive. RFK Jr. is also in excellent physical shape, defying the stereotypes of the sedentary politician. His vigor and vitality are emblematic of a candidate who's ready to take on the rigors of high office. Given his pedigree, his accomplishments, and his fitness, RFK Jr. seems to tick every box on the Democratic candidate checklist. He represents a blend of tradition, modernity, intellectual prowess, and physical endurance, elite status, and grassroots activism. It's an enticing package, one that many would argue makes him an ideal figurehead for the Democratic Party. And yet, Despite all these seemingly desirable traits, RFK Jr. remains somewhat on the periphery. He's not the poster boy of the Democratic Party, and some might say he's far from it. With such a profile, one would expect him to be the Democratic Party's dream candidate. So why isn't he? Stay with us as we delve deeper into the enigma that is RFK Jr. and attempt to unravel the intricate web of politics, power, and fear that seems to surround him. 20, 30, 40 years ago, the Democrats would have been begging RFK Jr. to run. What has changed? The Democratic Party, like any political entity, is a living organism, continually evolving and shifting. Over the years, it has seen its fair share of transformation. From the days of FDR's New Deal, to JFK's New Frontier, and LBJ's Great Society, the party has been a bastion of change and progressive ideals. But in the last few decades, there has been an observable shift in leadership demographic. Imagine, if you will, the Democratic Party as a grand old mansion, once filled with the vibrancy of youth, now echoing with wisdom of age. The voices that guide the party today are those seasoned by time and experience. Figures like Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and Nancy Pelosi are the experienced helmsmen navigating the ship through turbulent seas of American politics. They've been at the forefront of the party's leadership, advocating for a variety of issues from healthcare reform to climate change. But with age comes the inevitable resistance to change. The once dynamic and adaptable entity seems to have become rigid and set in its ways. The question that arises is not about the capability of these leaders, but about the willingness to pass on the baton. Is the Democratic Party becoming an advanced geriatric party with leaders who are unwilling to cede power? This is not to say that the party lacks young blood. There are upcoming leaders making their mark. But the reins of power remain firmly in the hands of the old guard. The party that once would have clamored for a candidate like RFK Jr. now seems to view him with apprehension. So what has changed? Perhaps it's the shifting sands of the political landscape or the changing priorities of the party. Or maybe it's the fear of the unknown the reluctance to let go of the familiar. Has the Democratic Party turned into an advanced geriatric party that is unwilling to cede power? This is the question that begs pondering as we delve deeper into the enigma that is the Democratic Party today. Could the corporate powers that now control the Democratic Party be the reason for their fear of RFK Jr.? As we delve deeper into the political labyrinth, it's hard to ignore the towering influence of corporate entities on the Democratic Party. One of the most formidable being the pharmaceutical industry, or as it's often referred to, Big Pharma. 
this industry, with its seemingly limitless financial resources, has become a significant player in the political arena. It yields considerable sway over policymaking, campaign funding, and even the narratives surrounding healthcare and public health. In this complex web of politics and corporate power, RFK Jr. emerges as a defiant voice. He has been a vocal critic of the pharmaceutical industry, challenging its practices and its influence over political decisions. His stance has often put him at odds with many in his party, where pharmaceutical contributions are a common feature of campaign funding. RFK Jr.'s criticism of Big Pharma isn't confined to mere words. He's been proactive in his opposition, engaging in legal battles and advocacy work to counter what he perceives as the industry's overreach. His approach, though commendable in its conviction, is not without consequences. It puts him in direct conflict with an industry that holds significant power over his political party. In a political landscape where funding can make or break a campaign, and where corporate influence often shapes policy, RFK Jr.'s stance could be seen as a risky gambit. His opposition to Big Pharma not only threatens the financial support his party receives, but also challenges the status quo, potentially unsettling those within the party who have become comfortable with the existing power structures. So we find ourselves facing a paradox. On one hand, RFK Jr., a man who embodies many of the characteristics traditionally associated with the Democratic candidate. On the other hand, his vocal opposition to a powerful industry that has significant influence over his party. Could RFK Jr.'s opposition to these corporate powers be the reason for Democrats' apprehension? As we continue to unravel the enigma that is RFK Jr., this question lingers, adding another layer to the intrigue that surrounds this dynamic figure. RFK Jr. claims he was denied Secret Service protection by Joe Biden and the Democrats. Why? It's a question that's been circulating, causing ripples in the political pond, and it's one we're about to delve into. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or RFK Jr., as he's more commonly known, has a family history that's been marked by tragedy. His father, Robert F. Kennedy, and his uncle, John F. Kennedy, were both assassinated while in the public eye, casting long shadows over the Kennedy family. Yet RFK Jr. alleges that he was denied Secret Service protection. In a world where political figures often receive such protection as a standard, this denial raises eyebrows. It's more than just a matter of personal safety. It's a statement a message that seems to subtly imply that RFK Jr. is not seen as a significant player in the Democratic Party. Yet, isn't it strange? RFK Jr. checks all the boxes of a stereotypical Democratic presidential candidate. Could the denial of protection be a way to assert dominance, to remind RFK Jr. and others like him of their place in the hierarchy? Could this be another sign of the Democrats' fear of RFK Jr.? It's a question worth pondering as we continue to explore the enigma of RFK Jr.'s relationship with the Democratic Party. So what exactly are the Democrats afraid of when it comes to RFK Jr.? In the previous scenes, we've delved into the enigmatic persona of JFK Jr., his political lineage, his stance against the pharmaceutical industry, and the apparent denial of Secret Service protection. Now, let's try to piece together the puzzle and attempt to understand why the Democrats might fear a potential dream candidate. One cannot ignore the stark reality. RFK Jr. opposes corporate influence, a stance that sets him apart from many within his party. Furthermore, RFK Jr.'s profile, an East Coast elite with a family history steeped in Democratic tradition, may paradoxically not align with the changing demographics of the party. Over the years, the Democratic Party has evolved, embracing a diverse range of voices and perspectives. This shift could potentially create a disconnect between RFK Jr. and the party's broader, more diverse base. In addition, there seems to be a reluctance among the party's seasoned leaders to cede power to the next generation. The likes of Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and Nancy Pelosi continue to hold influential positions, perhaps making it challenging for figures like RFK Jr. to break through. As we continue to observe the evolving political landscape, we can only wonder if RFK Jr. will ever be the Democratic Party's dream candidate. 